And welcome back to part two of the interview with Charlotte. ZocDoc is a great place to get good health care and to find a, the right specialist for you. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Charlotte and download the ZocDoc app today for free and then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Charlotte. ZocDoc.com slash Charlotte. You know, and like you're, because I, I really believe we all have, like everyone has the answers within if you ask the right questions at the right time. Like if, if you really are curious enough to your intuition and then uh, hallucinogenics are a great vessel for that yeah. and it amplifies it. So it's like you hear it right away. Yeah. And that's why I like it. Cause it's just like, oh, the fact that there's a drug that you can take, like there's just a substance in the world that you can take. You can take this thing, you feel crazy. You feel different for like, you, you donate a period of your life or t period of your day. Like if you're taking acid or whatever, here's 10 hours of my day that I'm donating to this or taking shrooms here for four hours of my day. I'm going to donate to the rest of my life. Like yeah. this will, I'll find something out from this. And so that's why I like it. Cause it's like, it's just such an interesting thing that you can do. Like you can like literally like escape your day and like go into this other like dream like state where you just get to like ponder and wander around and like you get to be like a different version of yourself. And like, it's just explore all these little portals within yourself and you learn something. Yeah. Like it's just that I love hallucinogenics for that reason. I'm just like, it's just our, our dad did too. So I don't, I wonder if it's like a, a genetic thing. Like our dad literally yeah. used to sell acid, got kicked out that's of his high crazy. school for, for selling acid. That's so fun. And so he's like, so that I, I think we Not are, fun, our chemical, whatever, like just responds to it. Yeah. Like just really like, is like, yes. Well, well I, I think love you're, this. you're such a intellectualist in the sense of like, you are very self-aware and you also know how to kind of therapize yourself in the sense of when something happens or when something upsets you, you're able to go, this is what happened. This is why it happened. This is how, this is how I reacted. This is why I reacted because of this childhood, this thing. <laughs> I under, you know, you're yeah. able to like completely just intellectualize whatever emotional issue you may have or mm -hmm. something that's presented to you in a way that something may hurt you and you're able to just like fully dive in, go through it like that. And I, I feel like as humans, as you especially, and I mean, I, I relate to that as well, just to like intellectualize yourself and to be very self-aware, there's a limit that comes to like being able to talk about something so blatantly and so self-aware, but without actually feeling it or, at, you know, without actually feeling like you're making any real change. Like even mm -hmm. if you're able to pinpoint the reason or the why, it's hard to like change that or understand like, you know, I, or, or not feel hurt or not feel like, <clears throat> I don't know, do you kind of know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like as humans, to, to, to speak and speak and speak and go through it and, and, and fixate on something and not know how to change that. Sometimes it's very beneficial to, to use an outside substance once mm -hmm. or twice or just rarely, you know, yeah. for a specific instance when you're like in a safe and controlled environment with somebody you trust or somebody yeah. that their, their professional job is yeah. to help you do this and to walk yeah. you through this to help you open your brain and let go of your ego and open your subconscious and like genuinely dive into the feeling aspect behind it and the the emotional aspect cuz i yeah. feel like when when somebody can be so self-aware and so just base just emotionally smart and like understanding of your trauma, your past, the whys, the mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, just like also morally cor correct in a way or not correct, but just like something morally on the same, on, on a level that I agree with and mm -hmm. that I believe is more morally correct. It's like, it's, it's very beneficial to, to, to feel that yeah. rather than just speak it. Yeah. And I feel like we both have that sort of thing. If like we can talk about things for hours and hours and hours, but not actually like dive into the, the hurt that it caused you yeah. and the pain that is lasted and therefore not actually getting through that issue mm -hmm. or not actually making any real changes in your reactions or what you may be doing. And I feel like with a hallucinogen, it helps you open your brain and open your mind and like, okay, I can, I can take away my ego and I can take away like all the reasons and all the ex explanations I may have for why I do this or what is going on. And I can just feel it yeah. and take care of myself and hug myself and feel myself and like maybe heal through yeah. just the feeling of it. Does that kind of make no, sense? No, it, it totally does. I'm like, am I, do H I sound like an idiot? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Pop, tell me if I do, guys. Hallucinogenics. It's all right. Like, I'll, I'll be fine with it. What I like about them is like they expedite growth. For some people, yeah. and like for some people, like some people try them and they're like, I fucking hate this. I'm never mm -hmm. doing it again. So I understand. And then you know, it's specific. It's, it's different for everybody, but like for, for the right kind of like mind where it like it rea you react to it well, which is a lot of people, you know, um, a lot of people love hallucinogenics and like there's been multiple studies. You can listen to multiple podcasts from some of the most popular podcasters out yeah. there that love hallucinogenics. You already know who I'm talking about, Joe Rogan's yeah. love him. He's like, I know people don't love him, but like, I, I think he's cool. But um. <laughs> That's probably such a hot take. People fucking <laughs> very hate big him. hot take. All girls <laughs> hate Joe Rogan for some reason. I think he's totally chill. But um, I I don't I don't I just never. I think I saw like one clip that I disagreed with his opinion on like three years ago, See, and this I just is the never problem. watched a podcast. This is the problem. Like one clip is like not who he is. You know, I know. that's just one opinion. Like I don't I know. just it just turned me off. And in regards to like, what did I didn't, you remember what he said? I do not remember at all. And mm -hmm. I, I just remember it was like uh, some video that I saw. There was something he said and it just made me go, uh, I'm not gonna give my, I'm not gonna waste two hours out of my day or however long his podcast is to listen to it. Cause mm -hmm. I just don't, I, and I know it's like, yeah, it's one opinion mm -hmm. and it's one little thing that I'm seeing, but I just, I don't have, I don't know. I've never watched a podcast of his ever. I've never listened mm -hmm. to a podcast of his. I've never seen a video longer than like five clip, seconds yeah. on TikTok. So I do not know enough to form my own opinion. And I also, yeah. I'm not one to follow anybody else's opinion and just be like, yeah, fuck him because yeah. this person said so. Or yeah, I love him because this person says so. I'm just like, I'm going to stay out of it. But I remember seeing a clip that I did. Yeah. I was like, fuck you. Like, who do you think you are? And I, I just yeah. didn't I, get my time to it. I find him very interesting and I find him like very curious. And, and I just think he's like a, he... I think he's, he can be fair. Like I know people aren't gonna like that, but I, I do, I'm not easily offended like too much. And, and I don't think he is either. And so I like that take. Cause like, I just, that's just how I am. But um, my point with hallucinogenics is like you, like what I like about it is like with hallucinogenics and, and like, especially when they get like very potent, like you just understand it in the moment. You know, when you like learn something or like some things, you know, when you see above yourself, like that's yeah. technically like what I would define intelligence when you like are in the moment and then you're able to come out, like um, kind of look at yourself unbiased, of anything where you pull, you go wider. That to me is like actual intelligence is awareness. If you yeah. actually think about it, like to me, so without your ego it, in yes, the way. Yeah. So hallucinogenics allow you to do that right away. So that's, it truly makes you smarter and to some aspects. And so you're able to truly understand, not just see it, but you understand it like I I took ayahuasca and <laughs> I've actually never said this but I took ayahuasca and like I remember like there's certain things like I immediately just understood like I was like there was this one moment where I like started crying whatever the whole thing I'm not gonna get into this but like I remember like which you should eventually because it's a very beautiful yeah, story and I remember like under like I remember feeling all of this feeling and being so sad and devastated whatever it was just like purging all of these tears and then I remember like just in the moment I felt how I felt as a kid for instance and then for the first time I accepted it acknowledged it didn't judge it and understood it. Where yeah. I was like, this is how it is. You can't take it back. No one can, can gaslight you and convince you of anything different. It is what it is and that's okay. And I understood it. It was like an instant understanding. It wasn't even an instant like awareness of like, oh yes, I see that now. I came out of it and I understood it. Yeah. And so I like that. Like I like that you can just do that. Like with different, like that's just to me, like just so like, I don't want to say the word addictive, but <laughs> addictive in, in a sense, like it's, it's like, obviously I'm not like actually addicted to hallucinogenics, but I, yeah, I you're do, not, she's not I, taking ayahuasca no, on the rug. No. No. But I do totally see like a benefit where it's just like, at least for me. And like, it, it just like, I, it expedites change and yeah. expedites growth. And I, I love anything that can do that. That's fucking As an cool. outsider also genuinely since Charlotte's taken ayahuasca and, and had that experience, I mean, it's like, you've always been wonderful. I've always loved you forever and always, but you've just like, you've turned such a new leaf Wait, in really? regards. Yes. In regards to just like how you carry yourself. Wait, and how seriously? You, yes. Do you agree? Yes. Wait, that's so nice. You have such a level of calmness around you in such a great way, which I think calmness derives from confidence and mm -hmm. security and just who you are, what you want, how you, the standard to which you, you know, <clears throat> hold yourself and, and self-respect and also just like what you're saying and understanding of 
your life and understand it. Because I feel like sometimes where people get lost, where I've felt I've gotten lost mm-hmm. before, is getting into that um, victim mentality of like, that's unfair, that mm-hmm. shouldn't have happened. And like, that happened to me. And like, that shouldn't have happened. That's unfair, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And it's the opposite of acceptance. Yeah. It's, it's going holy shit, I'm trying to change this thing in the past that I can never change. And I'm trying to fe- you know, feel bad for myself and <clears throat> and just make it as if it has to be you know, a part of me forever and my whole personality because this thing happened. And it's like, it's just, that's the opposite of growth, I believe. It's, yeah. it's, it's not like, you know, I feel like you've come to an acceptance about yourself of like, okay, you know what, this happened. This was my life. Like, that's what it is. This is, yeah. these are my cards that I was dealt with. So why wouldn't I, you know, take advantage of what I have and, and try my best to just be happy, even though I, I, you know, everybody, everybody goes through shit. Everybody mm-hmm. has something from their childhood. Everybody's yeah. parents fuck them up in one way, or whether you're overly school, loved or under loved or, or whatever, or, or school, peers or like anything, society, something, fucks something. Them up. something. Yeah. humans are humans. That's what mm-hmm. you get. That's what you realize when you get older is like, just cause your parents are your parents doesn't mean that they're not just a man and a woman trying to fucking figure it out. And their guess is as good as our guess. And this is their also raise like children. first time on earth too. Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's their first time. It's like humans are humans. Humans fuck mm-hmm. up and people get hurt by it. And I feel like you, since you've done ayahuasca genuinely have had this, like such this serenity and calmness about you of just like, I am who I am. Wait, this I've is experienced so nice. what I've experienced and whatever comes will come. And I also mm-hmm. feel like since then you've had such a level of like, I want to do my podcast. I'm mm-hmm. really passionate about it. I want to act and I want to be serious about it. I want to mm-hmm. go to classes. I want to do everything that I want to do to better myself, better my career. I love these friends of mine. So I'm going to hang out with them. I don't like these people that much. They're not, they're yeah. not great for me. I'm not going to hang out with them. Mm-hmm. You've like just been so, I think decisive and mm-hmm. just confident and, and I don't know, happy seemingly. Yeah. I don't want to speak for you, but it's like, you just, you, you just have this aura of like, oh, I sound like such a little hippie. Little <laughs> aura of blah, blah, blah. But you have, you present this aura when you walk into a room, everybody looks at you and it's not because like, you're, blah, 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 you know what I mean? Obviously you're fucking gorgeous, but it's because you just have this, like, just this confidence in this, like, just I don't know, calmness about you. That it's like, I feel like, I feel like anybody could throw anything your way and you'd be ready for it. And I know that's, it's, that's a hard thing to, to get to. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I'm certainly, that's very nice. And I I hope that's true. I'm certainly on the pursuit to acceptance. Like I'm not even fully there. And I I don't know if I ever will, Will we ever fully be there? You know what's interesting is I watched the documentary you told me to watch, and I watched it last night. The, oh, the really? Because I've been trying Stutz. Is that yeah. what it is? It's so good. But he talks about um, Stutz. Stutz. It's incredible. It's when jo- Jonah Hill does a documentary like with his psychiatrist on this guy called Phil Stutz, and he's my mom's psychiatrist yeah. for twenty years, and he's wonderful. He's like he comes. He literally was at our Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. He's wonderful. No, he's so but he has cute. Parkinson's, and he's like he's his whole thing. He's so different from any psychiatrist. His whole thing is like, the first time you sit down with him, he's like, I'm, I'll help you change your life. Like, I know how to change your life. I have my methods. I know how to fucking help you. Like, you gotta trust me or you don't, but yeah. and you, let's not work together. But if you trust me, like you gotta dive in, you gotta go for it and I'll change your life. And he just has, his thing is like tools. He has like all he's, these yeah. little- They're very interesting. So, it's so interesting. I, did, I would pause it when he would me do too, it and, and then like, do it myself. Right, me yeah. too. And I, I wrote it down yeah. and stuff, but it is so interesting. Yeah. Just, and there's, it's, it felt, I wanna hear your take on it. Yeah. But, for me watching it, also knowing him, and mm-hmm. I've talked to him a few times before, just yeah. like through my mom, and he's so just wonderful and smart and insightful. And he's, he's, very, somebody, he's very funny too. He's, he's so like, yeah, funny. He's and not he's just so, like a guy. He's no, like and he's, he has so much humility too. He's yeah. so great. Um, but he's he's somebody that if he was like, you should strip naked and go run down Hollywood Boulevard. I'd be like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would just do anything. Yeah, That's a weird blindly thing to say, follow. But I would just blindly follow. <laughs> yeah, him. but. What I love about him is that all of his tools and his Mm -hmm. ideals, when you see it in front of you, when you're reading it, like once you understand it, it just feels so simple. And the best way of like, yeah, like that's exactly what it should be. Yeah. And obviously the hard part is like actually getting to it and implementing it it in your life. But it's so, I was just so, I was blown away by it of like, wow, like that really does feel like the little tool of like, the grateful flow, that one yeah. thing, or like the life force the thing. for me is what got me. And I was like, wow, I feel like it helped me now. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm 
my anxiety because I get so fixated on mm-hmm. little things. And, and he was like, if you're ever like stuck in a rut, whatever, just, um, do the grateful flow in your head of like yeah. all the things that you you love and, and send and send all that love. I'm not, I'm not doing it justice. You guys should watch, you should watch it. It's yeah. fucking incredible. But it was like digestible. It was like, if you are mad at somebody, if you hate somebody, if you are like stuck and filled with anger or sadness or whatever, does somebody fucking hurt you and wronged you? He Mm -hmm. was like, in, uh, in close your eyes and envision yourself in a, just a world filled with love Love, and you're surrounded by love and it's all the things you love and, and like, get that warm hug and that and feeling and, and that happiness it and allow it. it to come in and he was like i know it sounds it. lame but fucking do it like, <laughs> he's like he's so he's like he's cool amazing like that. Like, and then he was like and once you have it and you feel it send all of it give every last drop of it to the person that you, you hate, hate yeah. and you're mad at and i did that and i genuinely was like oh i feel relief and i yeah. feel like a problem was solved without me having to i don't know yeah. talk to and you suffer no, or like yeah. involve anybody else but myself in my mind. And yeah. It's just so interesting. And he's, Sorry, and go, he, no, he says it. that it's like not, he's like, this isn't for them. He's like, this is not to make up with them. It's not to this. He's, it's for you. It's to get yeah. out of the maze is what he nobody, calls it. No matter what somebody has done to you, even if it's the worst thing in the world, it's never healthy to carry anger in your heart. You're never going to feel not, happy. Unless it's the worst thing in the world. Like there's some like no, psychologists I talk, like I've heard where they're like, unless you have like truly like the most brutal resentment, you should let go of it. Like, But, but I, they, think, I like that they kind of give this gray area of like some things are unforgivable. Almost. I just think though, I think though, I'm not saying to forgive everybody. I yeah. think I have, there's one person in the world that I'm like, fuck you till the day you die. I'll never forgive you. I hate you. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I'm what I'm trying to get and what, Stutz helped me with was not carrying that around with me. Yeah. Like I believe that if some, if somebody did the worst thing in the world to you, hate them forever, hate Mm -hmm. them forever. If you see them at a fucking party, you can hate them forever and feel Mm -hmm. that anger. If you see a picture of their face, you could feel that anger momentary, but it's like, I'm just talking about on a daily basis, living your life and carrying anger with you. Like that'll just make you an angry person, a sad person. And I don't, I, I think even if the worst fucking thing in the world happened to you, it's so healthy to, to find a coping mechanism like in Stutz, Mm -hmm. like what we were talking about, that can allow you to not res like to not just fixate on it and think about it 24 seven and to let it go and still live your life. That doesn't mean forgive them. That doesn't mean hate them any less. It just means like, don't fucking have it stained on you basically. Cause I feel like when I have gone through shitty things, it's taken me I just, I look back and I'm like, holy fuck. Like I wasted a year of my life that I could have, like a year that I could have been having so much fun and experiencing the things that I was doing instead of just like disassociating and staying in my mind with like hurt and pain and Mm -hmm. anger and like just waiting, just fucking feeling sorry for myself. You know what I mean? And I feel like once I was finally able to start letting go of like all the anger I had and all the pity and self pity and like just sadness through it. And it doesn't mean I feel it any less when I, when I look at whatever situation I'm looking at, but like, I'm not carrying it around with me every day. I've, I'm able to like enjoy the things in front of me and write better music. And like, it's just be a happier person. I just feel like some, you're right. Some things that are deeply unforgivable will forever stay unforgivable, but I still think it's healthy to find a way to not carry it around that anger with you forever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the aspect of like giving, I, I did that like last night, literally just like the, and, and it's like you become one with the person when you do it, like you like visualize giving love to them, like with your heart. And then like you become like one entity, yeah. which is really crazy. Which I loved. And yeah. I felt it too. Like I felt you it. it. You and feel you could, it. You do. It was like for one second, you guys yeah. are like equal filled with love like all it was also really another helpful thing which i liked he was like this can because i this can help with shyness shame this whatever like i don't know if i obviously everyone has like a shadow which what, what he talked yeah. about but like i don't know i was actually thinking i'm like i don't know specifically what mine is me like, too i you, was like you, how, were you how thinking, i figured out i don't know because like mine wasn't like some shameful like for jonah hill his Wait, was, describe what he, what he means by shadow. so like they explain in the documentary like what a shadow is and it's essentially like like it was essentially for Jonah Hill. Like the worst version of yourself. The worst ver- like the like thing the you're mo- most ashamed of yeah. being, you know, of like the thing, like the- that you hate about yourself the Everything most. you hate about yourself of like who you are and like what you press down and shame of like, I hate this fucking part about you. 
This episode is brought to you by ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app that lets you find your doctor. If you're looking for a new doctor and you don't know where to go and you don't know where to start, I highly recommend going to ZocDoc. It is an app on your phone that is patient reviewed and it takes insurance. And it's basically, you could find a doctor within 24 hours and there's reviews on each doctor and you can completely customize and pick out who your care physician will be, which is a really helpful app to have. I am without parents in the US. So for me, this is a very convenient way of actually finding healthcare for someone who honestly has no idea how to go about that and finding the right doctor. So ZocDoc essentially can pair you with a very compatible doctor. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. ZocDoc has trusted doctors with great reviews. They also have pretty much every doctor under the sun, chiropractor, dentist, everything like that. So it takes care of kind of the whole thing for you, which is awesome. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Charlotte and download the ZocDoc app for free. That is ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Charlotte. ZocDoc, Z- ZocDoc, ZocDoc dot com slash Charlotte. It is so hard to say, but it's probably easier to type. So go to ZocDoc dot com. And I definitely and you have try parts to hide. of myself that I fucking hate, but I couldn't necessarily pinpoint what My that one looked shadow. like. Me too. Yeah, because he said to visualize, okay, visualize like if you're a girl, like what that looks like. What does she look like? That version of yourself you don't like. And so I was like, because my thing is like, I hate that I'm shy sometimes. Like I hate that I can't like, that's like part of it. He even yeah. brought that up, like shyness or whatever. And so it was to visualize and like, first visualize what she looks like and like talk to her and like talk to her as you are now. And it was like, okay, what is she saying? Like, what does she say? What is she saying to you right now? And Jonah Hill talked to his shadow. Jonah Hill's shadow was that, um, was like that he was overweight when he was younger and that he was bullied for it and known for it. And constantly all around Hollywood was like, the fat, the fat guy, cat, yeah. the fat kid, the fat actor, whatever. And it was his shadow self that like haunted him. And yeah. Maybe so sad. I was like, no, I'm so sorry, it was, bro. it was, cause it, it made me like, angry at the world too. Cause I was like, mm-hmm. we did we as a did collective fucking do fuck that. you yeah. up dude. Cause he was like, he was the funny, he was the funny fat guy. It just makes yeah. it bummy. But you just don't, you don't realize think about, how it affects yeah, somebody. you don't, cause you think he's so, sad. um, Confident and, and confident cool and, and famous and rich and blah, blah. But it's like, no, that's, that was mean. And that was hurtful. Yeah. And it'll, that's, it's. Hard. Yeah. And like, but Jonah asks his shadow in it, like, um, like, how do you feel about the way you've treated me? Like, that was what he said to ask it. Like, mm-hmm. how do you, and the shadow is like, you've like ignored me and like pushed me down my whole life. And like, and you've been like, mean to you've me. been mean to me. You've tried to whatever. And he was just like, he was like, cause Jonah could literally like answer it. Cause he, it was like, this is what I mean. Like the answers cry. are so within. Sad. It <laughs> truly is. If you, if you truly ask your unconscious, the right questions, it knows the answer. And this is with everybody. I really do believe that. And so he asked him that. And then he was like, okay, what ask your shadow, like what it can do to make it better. Like, what can you do now to make up for all of this time that you've pushed all of it down? And he was just like, to celebrate me, me. Yeah. acknowledge me and celebrate me and don't push me down. And like, I just found and he that had so- like a cu- cardboard cut I out of when he was cardboard cardboard cut I was out. crying. I was like, it's really cute. It was, it was, cute. It was, it was so really sweet. Cute. But it's true. It's like, I, um, what is it? The Carl Jung. I don't, I don't have to pronounce his last name. The Carl Carl Jung quote of what does not, what you resist will persist. What, what, what you, I think it's what you resist persists Okay. in the sense of like, if you push something down, if you don't, if you ignore something, if you keep resisting whatever emotion you're feeling or you have something happen and you push it down, push it down, push it, Mm -hmm. it'll just keep poking through in ways that you don't want it to poke through. Yeah. And I think that it's like Phil's whole thing especially with the shadow thing is like, if you just, if you face it head on, it's like inner peace, yeah. you know, it's like, and it's accept it and, and the war and you're you not know, embarrassed within, and you know, yeah. I don't, what's your shadow self? I don't think it's shyness. I think that mm-hmm. maybe that could be a part of it. I think it's, but this is the thing is that's part of it. I know that's not the whole thing. I was thinking about this last night. I was like, Hey, what are the worst parts? Cause about you're me? not as shy as you think you are. Uh, that's, I, I think it's more so like a, like a, just a deep, which I think everyone has like deep self doubt of like, I'll never fully, I I've, I don't know if I'll ever fully like feel um, like a hundred percent cool. Like I, I, you know what I mean? I'll think I'll always have some sort of like 
feeling like no matter what, like I think I will, maybe I'll, I'll like get better and like build steps to a healthier, like whatever. I do think that will happen, but I do think that there'll be an aspect of me that will always like, just like never think I'm like, I don't know. I think that's important though. Yeah. I think I the people, I think that there's such a fine line. I mean, obviously there's a difference between confidence and cockiness. Yeah. But I think that the people who think that they are a hundred percent cool, are not fucking cool. That, but that all. also is like inflated ego. That's not even real. You know, like the people, like the people of healthy self esteems, like are the ones with humility and like are the ones, like to me at least, this yeah. is my opinion, you know? And, but I don't know. Like I, I do think it could get better. Like I, like I look at you, like you can like literally, like you're never shy. You're consistently the same. Like I, like I would love to be able to like be able to like, okay, turn it on and like be cool. I can't turn anything on is the thing. Like if you're nervous or something and I like, like I genuinely like this quality and wish I could have it. Like truly, Thank like I you. wish I had the ability to have in my tool belt as a tool to the ability to turn something on, but I can't, like I can't do that. And so I, I, I go inwards and I'm like, I just don't talk because I'm like out of fear of like, I'll say something stupid or like, in, like not right or this. So I'm just, I'm like, okay, so I'll just say nothing. <laughs> Cause I that's safe that. for me, you know, it's just like, it's like a it's part a of me I've had to net. accept, yeah, you know, I get that. It doesn't show. Okay. I good. also, I, I experience 1% <clears throat> of what you're saying in regards of when I'm in the moment, I can turn it the fuck on. Mm -hmm. I know how to, but I also think it's different. Th uh, it's, it's a, Obviously, I think, you know, the fight between nature and nurture is forever, you know, you'll never actually yeah. know. And I think it's different for every single human being. It's mm -hmm. always different. But part of how I was raised from when I was a child, like nine, 10 years old, um, we lived in, we grew up in Malibu and every single Sunday night, both my parents were working intensely with a big group of people. And every Sunday night, everyone would come together and we'd have basically a party. It would be a dinner party, jam night, mm -hmm. every Sunday night. And I was the youngest one there all the time. It was all adults. It was all creative people. So smart, just smart writers and mm -hmm. really interesting artists and cool people, like mm -hmm. people that I felt honored to be in the presence yeah. of and really wanted to know and wanted to be cool. And I had, I had a very, I'd say mature also mindset at like, 10 years old that I was like, okay, if I want to be able to be in this group, if I want, if, if I want my mom to let me stay up past my bedtime and not be the kid at the party and like not mm -hmm. have to be taken to my room or I whatever, figure this out. I have to figure this out. Yeah. I have to be cool. I have to present myself as, as if I'm equals mm -hmm. to everybody and I have to not be shy. I have to tell jokes. I have to take risks. Mm -hmm. I have to be funny and respectful. I have to know how to read a room. I have to know when to stop. Mm -hmm. And I feel like through that, through being surrounded by adults constantly when I was a kid, constantly, mm -hmm. it made me so that now I'm older, I, I feel very comfortable around mm -hmm. any walk of life. Yeah. Any person I could talk to, yeah, I you could can totally hang. Thank yeah. you. It's, I love that quality yeah. about myself, but it doesn't mean that Every single morning after, even if I was dead sober, which most of the time I am, I don't even, I don't drink guys, by the way, even though I have a glass of wine, I'm like, <laughs> I'm a very like, I'm decently sober except for mm -hmm. weed. <laughs> Drinking we should wine, still I mean, like, hit one thing. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, no matter what the morning after, I always like, whether it's you I text, mm -hmm. which I do all the time, mm -hmm. or it's my mom or whoever I was with of like, was that one story that I told like too much? Was that a little weird? Like, are they gonna blah, blah, blah. And I always, I, I get a reassurance, whatever. And then I just kind of have to calm myself down of like, oh my God, nobody is thinking about me like that. Yeah. I am, I am the only one thinking about what I did and said last night. Everybody else is thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. No one is being like, oh, that one little sentence Charlotte said was so embarrassing. Like, blah, blah, blah. And like, no one cares. Like they're yeah. thinking about what they said. So it's a way for me. I feel like if you kind of, I've totally learned to accept that it's like, everybody will is in their more is in their own head and everybody cares about themselves more than yeah. they care about anybody else and they're only thinking about what they're doing wrong and their embarrassment their anxiety more than you accepting that I was just like okay I'm just gonna say whatever I'm just gonna have fun yeah. I'm just gonna do what I want to do and also me like turning it on doesn't mean that I'm like faking anything it just kind of means like I know how to I'm just I power get through almost. I can power yeah. through yeah and I also like 
I can kind of understand of like, okay, this, this crew has a good sense of humor. I can be my funny self. I can be mm-hmm. my dirty, rowdy self. Like I can this, say this what, what I, I want to say. Though. This is what I mean by turning. I don't mean it in a phony way. I mean it in the sense of like, you can do it. Like, yeah. you know. But so can you. Yeah. Here's how I feel. Here's what I'm looking at. Yeah. How do I put it together? Mm -hmm. Or in a crew that's like, okay, we're having a very mellow, sad night. Like, I'm going to keep to myself. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to be, it's just like, it's just knowing how to read a room. And I think that 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 comes with natural ability, which you have a lot of, even though you don't always realize it. You know how to read a room. You know how to fit. You know how to, you're the best listener I know out of anybody I've ever met. Out of all my friends, I feel like you ask questions because you want to know the answer, not because you're just trying to charm or be polite. And I, f- I know so many fucking people who I can tell are asking me a question, just waiting uh, waiting for me to answer it so that they can tell me something about themselves. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and you can tell, you can tell when somebody's yeah. inauthentic and doesn't actually care about what you're saying. And you care and you are, that's why you're such a good company. I mean, it's not the only reason, but part of the reason why you're such amazing company is like, you're genuinely interested. And we have, I mean, guys, it's so funny. We could probably literally sit here for 12 hours no, straight. literally. Charlotte yeah. and I, if we're not <laughs> hanging out, which, cause we hang out all the time and we just do this. Mm. But if we're not hanging out every single night, Every night, we're on FaceTime for maybe six hours just doing this, no, having like le- existential yeah. like life conversations about we shoot all the shit. we shoot this yeah. shit. But you listen and you care and you make me feel comfortable to say anything and, and everything. And I mm-hmm. never feel judged by you and I never feel embarrassed. And I think therefore we have such a beautiful relationship because there's no dishonesty and there's no like, there's nothing that I would never, there's nothing that I couldn't tell you ever mm-hmm. or wouldn't feel comfortable enough to talk to you about. And- you, because I val, I think you're so smart and I, I value your brain and how you think and how you've fucking in the past, especially year, two years, just prioritized your mental health and, and found a, a psychiatrist you loved and experimented with hallucinogens as mm-hmm. we were talking about and just really dove into like knowing yourself, learning yourself, healing yourself, doing the whole thing. I value you and your opinion that it makes me like, just want to listen to what you have to say Mm -hmm. on repeat. So, I mean, it's like as much as you can feel shy and have that anxiety and have that as a part of your shadow person, Mm -hmm. it really, it's like, it does not show. No, that's very nice. And I doubt anybody that knows you would ever describe you as shy. I hope so. Oh my God. I hope so. I think some people would, but I hope not. It's more so anxiety. I, I more so say shyness because I, I think of like, what is something I shame myself for? And it's that. it's that. Like, if I'm shy, I'm like, you fucking, this is my my dialogue in my head. I'm like, Charlotte, fucking pull this together. Why the fuck are you being shy right now? It's like, it's like a, a And then you probably like get in a loophole. No, it's like, like it's, that's what I mean. Getting anxious I shame, about it and then. I shame that part of myself so heavy. So I'm like, that has to be in it. That has to be, that has to be like taken in consideration for the shadow. You should try to experiment sometimes. Experiment and just with what? Like, in the sense of next time you go out, because again, yeah. nobody cares as much as you do. Mm-hmm. And if you can get that actually in your brain of like, nobody gives a fuck as much as I do, yeah. I feel like it'll just make you feel free in the sense of try to experiment next time you go out with people you don't know, something new, date, whatever it may be, and genuinely just be like, I'm just gonna say whatever I wanna say. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna be funny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push the boundary. I'm gonna. I'm going to not speak for an hour. If I don't want to speak for an hour, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do and not try to put anything on and just like be fun and be whatever and act as if I'm with people that I know and whatever. And if, if I don't get a laugh one time, if I say something awkward, Mm -hmm. who cares? It's so fleeting and nobody will remember. It's like, yeah, just have fun with it. Yeah. I don't know. I think my shadow person, I feel like we can end it after this, but I have no idea what my shadow person is because Mm -hmm. I feel like a part, I want to say my shadow person is the part of me that's very, that can get really insecure and like jealous and Mm -hmm. like feel really anxious or feel really indecisive, I think might be my like shadow person. Mm -hmm. Really like just, and I think it all kind of leads back to like having not, I don't have much trust in myself or Mm -hmm. my decision making or my gut. And obviously that, that comes from trauma, whatever the fuck it is, and can obviously be healed as I'm working to heal it. But it's hard for me to pinpoint my shadow person because mm-hmm. I never, I feel like it is going along with my indecisiveness. I'm like, it's this. No, 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 it's not. It's this. Or yeah, no, 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 no that's just because of a reaction to this. And I, it's hard for me, but I feel like maybe it's 
indecisiveness. I don't know. I just, I get very, I hate the part I hate about me the most is like when I get like today, when I was talking about the fight that we got in Mm -hmm. of like, when I get, when I feel insecure and like jealous and then I feel stupid and I'm like, Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm being like, I'm being the girl that I would hate. Like Mm -hmm. if I dated this girl, like I would be like, ew, like why? Ew, Mm -hmm. like she, no, like I'm going to break up with her. You know what I mean? Like I just, when I get that, like jealousy, insecurity, like just untrusting whatever. And yes, it has its reasons. It has its things. It has its history, but I just, I, I hate that part about me. I wish I could just be like cool flowing and not have, because it fucks up my day when it's I get It's basically asking, like, I wish I had no scars. I wish yeah. I had no scars. Yeah. I, I do. talked about how scars... Shape you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they do. And I don't wish I had no scars. I just wish I was able to, like... I wish I was able <laughs> to, like, to work through them. I wish I was able to recognize that my scars were there, but to not have it affect me all the Define time. Define you. Yeah, yeah, and to not, like carry around I feel like I carry anxiety with me everywhere I go because I just don't know how to still I can't get over some things that Mm -hmm. have happened that I'm like oh like I wish I could just be like that happened but it's not gonna happen again and if it does I'll be let known of it and it's fine and I can let it go and like I just wish I was able to kind of live my life without constant anxiety of like I don't know what's going on I don't know if I made the right decision what am I supposed to do is this right am I supposed to stay like this forever am I supposed mm-hmm. to leave and move to fucking Bahamas and this like mm-hmm. I just don't have much faith in my decision making yeah. anymore and I just wish I could get that back yeah maybe hallucinogens will help <laughs> <laughs> it's like a full, full like, circle circle <laughs> into let's take hallucinogenics um should we end it then? yeah yeah part okay. one guys this is Charlotte's first time coming on this podcast it won't be the last, Not the last. We, we should talk about nepotism and <laughs> Music. Charlie I really wants to talk, talk about, about nepotism. I want to talk about nepotism for like <laughs> five hours. <laughs> I love that I'm a nepo baby. Just kidding. <laughs> Me and Eileen talked about you in our nepotism talk, really? but not in a bad way. She talked about you in a good way, and so did I. Oh, I love we you guys. Did. My thing with nepotism. I'll say one thing, and yeah. then we have to end it. Because I do have to go to work. Be, this will be our entrance into the entrance next, into the next one. Is that this is my thing? I was born with such an advantage. I was born into a family with money and a family with connections and a family in the industry and in an industry that I want to partake in and experiment in and live in and uh, that I love. Um, And that's what I was born with. I, I can't control that. I didn't decide as nobody decided what they were born with. And I am so fucking lucky Mm -hmm. that I was born with the shit that I was born with. I'm so fucking lucky that I had a beautiful home and food on my table. It is by chance and it's by luck. And I was so lucky that I was born in LA. You you won like a roulette. I did. I did. And I feel so grateful for my parents because they're so lovely and supportive and kind. But I feel like, especially in regards to acting, because that's genuinely just my parents' world. I, I, I booked a job and I kid you not, I fucking read, I mean, I prepared, I went to fucking classes, acting classes every single day for like two months. Genuinely, I couldn't, I couldn't prepare myself enough. I was so nervous. I felt such a crazy need to prove myself on a further level and to show that it's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm, you know, that I'm who I am, but like, I just, I really want to do this. I'm so passionate about it. It's so exciting to me. I would learn my lines and the person's lines across me. And also I could be literally the worst actress on the planet. We'd have no idea yet. We haven't seen anything like could just never work out, but it made me happy. So I tried so hard and I worked my ass off and I feel like it's like, just because some people are born into, you know, lives that are very fortunate, like I am, doesn't mean that they shouldn't be allowed to pursue what they want to pursue. You know what I mean? And it's like, it kind of, I, I sometimes I feel for people that get hate on all the time for being nepotism babies. Just, I mean, I don't feel bad for them. Obviously they're very lucky. They have everything in the world that mm-hmm. everybody wants. You know what I mean? But I sometimes feel for them of like, Hey, like they can't help with what their talent is. They can't mm-hmm. help what their passions are. Like, and you know, if you were born into something and given all these advantages and opportunities and didn't work hard and didn't, and didn't, uh, treat everybody around you with respect and didn't care, you know what I mean? Like, then I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? But Mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like being given, being uh, being born into opportunity and being born into a life that is very lucky, I 
I feel like I'd be stupid to not take advantage of it. And I, I'm so passionate about music and performing, like I said before, that it's like, all I wanna do is take advantage of it and work my fucking ass off. But again, it's like, I, the door is open for me, wide fucking open. I have so many opportunities that no one will ever have, I know that. But to get in the door, I have to fucking work for it. No one's gonna give you a job if you don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's not always the case, but like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel, I just, I don't know. Does that yeah. kind of make sense? No, it makes sense. That's my take on nepotism. I'm, I've said that before too. I'm like everyone, everyone is the same and and certain people were born with like a luckier hand than others, but that is not to like take away from them, you know? I also, it's like if I was born, you know, <clears throat> to a random whatever, if I was born just as I am, same personality, same passion, same talents, but no money, no connections, no anything, I'd still try to pursue this. It would be mm -hmm. so much fucking harder. And that's what makes me feel guilty is that I'm like, there are so many, there's millions of beautiful voices. There's millions of incredible songwriters. There's millions of amazing actresses that will never get a shot and that will never make it. And that's just the truth. And it's fucking sad and it's hard. And it's like, shit, dude, like why do I get lucky and you don't? It doesn't feel fair mm -hmm. and it's not. But I, I still would have tried, you know what I mean? So it's like me having this leg up is just lucky. I just, I did, I won the lottery, but it's like, it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna fucking work my ass off to just mm -hmm. to try to get there myself, you know? Yeah. And I'm all, almost like prove myself even more so that I'm like, I know, I know what I was born into. I know what you look at me as. I know what you already have this <clears throat> preconceived notion and idea of who I am and why I'm here. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I'm gonna try to try. It doesn't mean I am, doesn't mean I will, but I'm gonna try to show you yeah. that I deserve to be here. You know? I think people's like problem with nepotism is like, it's not like they like feel like people don't work and stuff like that. Like people, I don't think doubt that like you work hard or like Lily Rose Depp works hard. It's like people are like, people only want people to acknowledge it. That's yeah. it. Like, it's like, if you acknowledge that you have like well, an- guys, un I am a nepo baby. <laughs> and she acknowledges it. <laughs> I acknowledge it shamefully. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but I think that's it's what it, it is. Like, I think people just want you to acknowledge, like people just want people with like to acknowledge that they have an unfair position in the world and that they got there partially because of their connections. Yeah. And like, if, if pe and people just get mad when they don't. That's like what I see, like online. I understand where I'm like, that you though. Know, but also it's like- Where it's like people got really no, mad at Lily Rose for saying that like I, nepotism. I didn't like it. what she said either though. Yeah. I'm like, well, it was like, a little, yeah. I, I, it was yeah. a little like better than. Out of touch. And I love her. I think she's so fucking talented I think and wonderful. She's sick, yeah. And I do think if she was just able to own the fact of where she came from, no one would have a, no one would have a, yeah. a have anything to say. I but, do. Yeah. You're, you're right about that. I, I, but I don't, I don't think people doubt that she worked hard. Like people no. don't doubt that Lily doesn't work hard or that she's talented. Like she, she's very talented and she works really hard. Yeah, it, but what she like said you, was out of touch. But it, but it was like, yeah, like the whole point is like, you wouldn't you have walked for Chanel, it. like if you were five, like that's like, you that's, like that's full nepotism. Like you got that because you're the daughter of Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp and Victoria. I don't yeah. even know her mom's name, but Vanessa but Paradis. Vanessa. No, but yeah. you're right. And it's if she would just acknowledge it. And, and she was like, yeah, I did get this because of this. Like that's because that's blatantly objectively true, you know? And that's all people want people just want like uh, some acknowledgement of truth and like for people to be understand why they got the jobs that they get, yeah. you know, because Completely. there's like, uh, there's thousands of people doing the exact same and working singing job, even acting harder. job, like, and then, and they have and nothing, not you know, yeah. And not having any opportunity to show yeah. them, to show anybody that they yeah. deserve that part. That's what's the sad part to me is that mm -hmm. it's like, there's so many fucking talented people in the world <clears throat> that just won't ever have, that don't even have enough money to fucking get on a plane to yeah. show somebody, to audition for something, to show yeah. someone, I deserve to have this part. I deserve yeah. to do this. But I also think through COVID, I feel like it's been very helpful. And through TikTok, one of the big positives of TikTok mm -hmm. and COVID that anybody could be discovered now. And you could yeah. just post a million videos of you singing on TikTok. I've, some of my favorite artists of this year, this girl called Leith Ross, like, mm -hmm. Just random girl. I think she's from Canada. So, or they, sorry. Yeah. I think they're from Canada. Are they a they, them? Okay. Yeah. It's, they're non-binary. And they are so fucking talented and so immaculate. And I never would have, no one would have ever known who they were um, without mm -hmm. TikTok and without um, just having, I think they had like yeah. one video went viral and it was just the end game. And now they have a record deal and it's a whole thing. And I'm like, it's a beautiful that anybody could be discovered now. Anybody could show their talents to the world in a sense. Yeah. Anybody could go viral and it's very beautiful. But yeah, I think it's just, I don't know. It's just the certainty. I think like as, as like, it's like, 
if you're, if you have nepotism, like in your family, there's a certainty that you will be successful. Like there's a certainty, like you, you have something to fall back on and you know, you'll be successful in some capacity. And like literally 99% of the other people don't have that. So it's like, it's when people are like, I didn't get here because of nepotism. It's just like, it's, it's almost like you don't, you don't know what you, you, you don't know how much you have. Yeah. And it's, and to other people, it's frustrating because it's like, we don't have that, so we know. So we how know, much and we, we don't it. have. Yeah. We have no certainty. We have no anything. I you know. I dude. I fucking something. Honestly, I feel like it's honestly. I mean, I don't know if this is right to say. Who cares what's right and wrong? To say. <laughs> it's my truth. Is I feel like the aspect of knowing in the back mm-hmm. of my head forever that if I fail, I will never be homeless. I'll never yeah. be on the streets. I will always have something to fall back on. Mm-hmm. I will always have a family that yeah. could help me if I was shit broke and didn't have anywhere to go. And you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like having that voice in the back, in the back of my head is sometimes, even though, again, I, I mean, I've already spoken about how, how lucky I am for what I have. Mm-hmm. I fucking know how lucky I am. I, I never take it for granted. I know how lucky I am and what I've been gifted and given just like based off of pure luck. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like that voice in my head that goes, you'll always be fine kind of hinders hinders my I this is how I kind of this is how I can put it is say there's two versions of me and there's another Charlotte right here that has the exact same talent the exact same personality the exact same charm the exact same looks Mm -hmm. everything is the same every single thing except she has no money no family money no connections no anything whatsoever Mm -hmm. but we're exactly the same and we were up for the exact same job I want it so badly. Mm -hmm. I want that job so fucking badly. I'll do anything to get that job. I want it so badly. I'm Mm -hmm. so obsessed with it. I'm so passionate about it. She needs it. Yeah. She's going to get it. Even if we're the exact same, she's going to get it because she's going to, she needs it. She's going to work 10 million times harder. She's hungry. She's hungrier for it. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like I have a really good work drive. I do. I, I work every single second of every day. I also though, I'm so lucky that I get paid off of my passion. Like music Mm -hmm. is literally, I would do it for free for the rest of my life if I never got paid a dime. And I'm so it's like, I feel like I'm able to have a very good work drive because I just love it so much. I would be in the studio all until five in the morning if I didn't have two dogs to come home to. But I feel like this sense of needing something and needing a job and needing to get it and doing everything in my power to get it is I guess less in my brain because I always know that I will be fine, that I don't need it. I just Mm -hmm. want it. And I'm like, no, but I want it, need it. I want it, you Mm -hmm. know? And it's the difference of like, I could take a day off. I could take a weekend off. I could fucking, oh, I feel so sick today. I feel so shit. I'm not going to go to the studio and finish the song that I need to finish, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and this girl is going to do fucking, this Charlotte's going to do everything in her power because she needs it because she needs to fucking eat and needs to make it in one way or the other. You know what I mean? But I think that's how people look at it too. Like people that aren't like in that position, look at it like, okay, there might be people like, honestly, like this is the flip side to that. Like people look, okay, there's people with the connections and this and that, but I'll work harder. Yeah. You know, they almost look at it like that. They're like, they, they might have this, but I'll work harder when they're on their days off because I want it more, you know? So that's like the flip side to it. It is. But I get that. That makes sense. That makes total sense because it's like, you have everything, you know? And so it's like, where's like your like will to like, where, like to fall, like into like, you know, that propels you fear of like not having something will propel you to work harder. Failure is what also propels people a lot. I think it's like, When you're at a place that you're like, oh my God, I have, this is my only thing that I have. This is Mm -hmm. my last fucking shot. I need to do this or I'm going to fucking, I I'm, I'm done. You know what I mean? And then it, it propels them. I think some, so many success stories of people that you read, even like Rosalie, I read a cool story about her. It was like that she was just, she didn't Mm -hmm. come from anything and she Mm -hmm. fucking put all that she had into this like one music video. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, this is it. If it fails, if it doesn't work, like she's done. And it, she put all of her money into it. She put all of her time and money and work and everything into it. And therefore it was absolutely incredible. And she fucking worked her ass off and powered through and, and was her own biggest champion and fan and it worked and she made it. But it's like, if she didn't, if she didn't put her all into it, if she didn't work her literal ass off, she wouldn't have. But yeah. I also, I don't want to, misquote her or anything yeah. it was just like a story it was from so long ago but yeah I also think again on the other flip side of it especially with acting when it came to like acting I think 
because that is like the most nepotism I could get of like, my mom's an actress, my dad is showrunner, writer, creator, like it's their world that mm -hmm. I'm stepping into. It made me go, holy fuck, like I can't be bad. I mm -hmm. can't, like I can't be, be given this opportunity and be gifted this like chance and, and not, and fail. I don't yeah. know, you know what I mean? But that's and good to feel that, you know? It was yeah. good, it felt good. And I also though, again, we don't know, it could, the show could come out and I could literally be horrible. So like, mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything yet. But as much as you could say whatever you want about me, you could you could say nepotism, you could say this, you could even say I'm bad if I'm bad, but you'll never be able to say that I didn't work hard. Cause mm -hmm. I genuinely, I was up until fucking one in the morning every night, read, I knew my lines, I knew the fucking person I was acting mm -hmm. was lines. Like I, I tried, I've never tried harder in anything in my life, genuinely. Mm -hmm. Like I cared so much, I still care so much. It was just like, I was first of all so passionate about it, so excited to do it, but I just cared, you know, like mm -hmm. I just, I was like, I need to be good at this. I need to put, I need to walk away from this going, oh my God, I did everything I could ever possibly do to be good at this and to be great mm -hmm. at this. And I, there's nothing that I would have done differently, even if I suck, you know what I mean? Which mm -hmm. play fucking pray to God I don't. Even if I suck, like I fucking put my all into it. Yeah. I was more than prepared. I was more than, just ready and, and I don't know. Yeah. I think people have a hard time looking at people who have more than them as like real people, you know? That. And that's, I think the problem the, it, it it's that issue ver and the issue of people not acknowledging their privilege. It's both of them. It's not just people not acknowledging their privilege. It's also people having a hard time, like having, being able to have love for people that have more. Yeah. It's not just one side. I get people, that. cause, cause I, I see both sides. So I think it, it comes down to like people seeing you as like a normal person with that was just born into the person, like the, the position that you're at. And then also like having a little bit of empathy for it, but people have yeah. a really it's hard time It's also hard that, to have you know? empathy for somebody who was born who with, was more. with, no, with I more. I totally noticed I that. I totally people get that. People fucking don't do it. <laughs> like I people mean, really don't. I, I mean, I relate to that in the sense of like, again, even though I was, I was gifted with so many things, I think growing up in LA was very, it's hard growing up in LA. And mm -hmm. I, I have, I've been through my fair share of trauma with whether it's with men or with whatever situation mm -hmm. it might be. And I've gone through some shit and like, I won't discredit those experiences, but a lot of those experiences have, have, made me have made my shadow self mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> very prevalent in my mind and very hard to get over and have made me an anxious person and whatever it may be and I sometimes feel jealousy towards people that I meet that I'm like holy shit like like uh, let me think like I feel like Gracie's a good example of this mm -hmm. or Blake or Talita even those the three, three people, people the three that people you out. that's hilarious is that they I mean I do not want to speak for them I am not discrediting anything they went through but they are three people that on a day-to-day -day basis and I know them so well like they're just like happy people and I could tell that they've like they've had pretty good just lives. really good lives and have been held and loved and cared for and have fucking incredible parents and incredible just people around them and have just like you can see it radiating out of them that I'm like you just you're not that damaged like you're mm -hmm. yes like they've been through shit like they I know they all have been through yeah. fucking shit on their own but maybe it's just like healing through it or whatever it is I sometimes I'm like oh I wish I wish I could have as happy and as calm and as like anxiety free as a just state as yeah. you guys do. And I feel that sometimes, and I know it's not the same thing at all, but like, mm -hmm. I understand, I understand the, the, I don't know whether it's jealousy or whether it's like a hard time having empathy or a hard time seeing somebody who's born into more as a normal person mm -hmm. or like feeling, I don't know, I, whatever it may be. Like, I understand that because it's like, you can't control it, yes, and that's the truth. It's not tech, It's not their fault that they've like been yeah. dealt maybe a little bit of a better hand. Mm -hmm. Maybe they also haven't, and like I don't, I don't ever want to speak for them. I don't yeah. know. But just the way that they are now, of just like mm -hmm. happy and kind and accepting and loving and just like all just living a great happy life. And sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, I wish I could just have that state of mind of just like calmness. And mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes things that I've been through have prevented that maybe from happening, but also maybe it's just everybody goes through shit and it's just me and my own mind getting mm -hmm. in the way, preventing myself from doing it. But I don't know. I just, I understand. I understand of like looking at somebody who has more than you in whatever way, whatever regard, mm -hmm. whatever it may be and going, 
Yeah. Why did they get that? And I don't. Yeah. I don't know. It's envy. And like you, it's, it's interesting to notice in yourself. I think I it do have to go soon. No, no, I had totally a session fine. at 1 PM and didn't text well, them. Let's, and it's let's, three. No, let's wrap it here. But yeah, no, it, it is envy. And I think everyone should acknowledge it within yourself because no one in the world, not one person doesn't experience it at one point. It's just yeah. acknowledging it. Like I, I don't, I'm not here to say like, you have to go empathize with every nepotism. Well, I don't care, <laughs> but it, like, at least be reasonable. <laughs> like I, I urge you to be reasonable. I'm, I'm being serious. Don't you want to be a reasonable person? Like, I'm not saying like you act like you have to feel bad for people who have more. I'm saying to be reasonable and hear people what they're saying. Yeah. Like people will have more and will continue to have more than me and than you, than everyone. It's just how it works. But to, to hear them out and to not just let that be it. You know, I just like think that judge just, people on how they treat people, mm -hmm. judge people on their kindness and yeah. how they treat others and how they treat others that have less than them and how they treat just judge fucking if somebody's judge mean the right to things. someone, if somebody's mean to you, if somebody's mean to a fucking waiter, I if somebody's like rude and just blatantly like better than attitude, whatever mm -hmm. it is, fucking judge them. Yeah. Be pissed at them. Judge them for that. That's my thing is like, if I, I, I like to go in open-minded in every situation, wherever you come from, whoever you are, whatever your beliefs are, if you're a kind person, if you're kind to those around you, if you're respectful, I'm, I'm going to like you and I'm going to not have, I'm not going to say anything shit about you. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, I think it's just that whole, just treating humans as humans and not having like what you said, a placade of like just that wall up already of like uh, assumptions about somebody without actually knowing them. But yeah. I also think that's a big problem with society and celebrities. We could talk about this for hours. Yeah. Of it's very that it's black like, and white. You know? It's yeah. That immediate everybody I'm, it's either I'm at good fault of this. Bad. Exactly. It, but also you know, without like, knowing them or ever meeting them or ever actually knowing them and just yeah. judging them based off of their worst moments yeah. and their, Best moments. Best moments. It, and yeah. it's so, it's like, that's just so unfair. But Selena Gomez, the best person ever. This person, the worst. It's exactly. Like, and then it oh changes in a week. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Dude, if you don't fucking know them, if you've yeah. never like sat down with them and know them, and I, I don't know, like, yeah. what gives you the right? But also, yeah. like, they've chosen to be public figures and celebrities. Yeah. So I guess it does give them the right to judge. Whatever. Yeah. We can talk about this for hours, but okay. I have to go. Have and to I love you so up. much. Charlotte, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. You. you were an amazing guest and we will be back for more. We'll be back for more guys. If you want it. <laughs> Bye.